Hey guys, you wanna see how I take this glaze and create a beautiful faux wood finish? Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right guys, so this is part two of the faux wood grain video. If you missed part one, we'll link it in the description of this video. In part one of the video, we put a texture medium down on our MDF and we ran a decorative roller through it and created a faux wood grain. Then we painted it with two coats of our stone coat countertop undercoating. Now this is what's important. You can paint it with any color, any kind of paint you want. I would stay away from the oil-based paints, but just about any paint that you wanna paint, you can do that, depending on what kind of wood that you are gonna to try to create. Um, I asked you guys last week what you wanted to see, and I had a ton of people wanting to see a very light, sort of a driftwood look. That is why I painted it white, and we're gonna be going over it with a gray um, glaze. Let's get started. All right, so what I did is I made my own glaze because I didn't have the exact gray that I wanted uh, in a ready-made glaze, so I just made my own. Uh, I started with an acrylic paint from General Finishes. This happens to be Queenstown Gray. Now you don't have to use General Finishes. You could use a latex paint from uh, any of the big box stores. Uh, you can use a basic acrylic paint. It's up to you. You could use a chalk paint. Uh, if you use a chalk paint, you don't need to use the Floetrol, which is uh, an additive that I use to make my glazes. Uh, but since I am doing this acrylic paint, I'm gonna add one to one ratio of my paint to my Floetrol. Then I'm gonna bring in water and I'm just gonna eyeball the water. If you get it really thick, it's gonna be a little harder to pull off and to create that real subtle glaze look. If you get it too runny, then it just doesn't deposit any color. So about a one to one ratio with these two and then just add water to your liking. All right, so before we painted it, after the, the texture medium was dry, I hit it with a sander, but I did not sand it all the way flat. I wanted to keep some texture so that when I go over this with the glaze, it's gonna have um, highs and lows for that glaze to, to grab a hold of. Okay, so here we go. I've got my glaze. And look, I just have a tiny bit, guys. A little bit of this glaze goes a long way. All right, so I'm just gonna start painting it on there. And because I've added the Floetrol, Floetrol increases the uh, open time. So it gives me plenty of time to work. Now, if you're in a very, very hot area, or maybe doing this in your garage, then your open time will be a little shorter than if you're doing it inside in the AC, which is where we are today. All right, so now I'm gonna come back with just a dry towel. Uh, I like using blue shop towels. I don't have any of those right now today, but blue shop towels are great, but paper towels will work just as well. Now, as I pull it off, you need to be th make the decision on how much of that you want to pull off. Do you want your wood to be uh, really light? And if so, I can pull off quite a bit of that. Or do you want it to be dark? You can also go over the top with a darker glaze. But I just wanted it to be a nice good mid-tone. Now you don't want to leave pools of your glaze. You want to pull it off so that you don't have large, large areas of just a lot of liquid. If you do, it's just going to take you a lot longer for it to dry. All right, now see how just by putting that glaze on there, how it really makes that pattern pop? All right, I'm a, I like that. I like that right there. Now the really cool thing about doing a wood grain is that I can actually act like these are planks of wood and I can come on my next piece, kind of get my imaginary line, and I may decide to leave a little more of that glaze on that piece to make my planks of wood 
look a little more realistic instead of being all one color. Just kind of imaginary line there. Go ahead and go all the way down with this piece. And you really want to kind of stipple that glaze down into your texture medium. And then once you stipple it, you can come back and smooth it out. Now, see how I have two different colors? Now what I can do is decide how much of each one of those I want to pull off. If I want to keep this plank dark, then all I have to do is pull a little bit of that off. You can even come in here with a different color glaze and each one of your planks would be a different shade. And then I can pull, come back, since I have plenty of working time, I can pull this plank even more and that's where I'm gonna get my two tones. Now cheesecloth is also a really good material to pull your glaze off. If you don't sand really well, sometimes the, the texture medium will have some little sharp edges and it'll tear up your paper towel. Cheesecloth, you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily get that. And I'm just gonna keep pulling them off. Now see how I've got one light and one dark? That's just helping me with my depth. Now if I pull something off a little bit too much and I wanna come back and add, all I have to do is come back with that paintbrush. And like I said, because it's a glaze, I've got plenty of that open time. And you can just kind of play until you get the desired look that you're going for. You can even come back with your brush after you pulled off the material or pulled off the glaze. You can come back with your brush and even kind of dry it a little bit and smooth that out and just give it a look, cool look. Now I like that real uh, contrast, but if you don't, then all you have to do is come back and pull a little bit more off until you get it to where you like it. Now, once an area has dried a little bit, and like I said, you have plenty of open time. If I wanted to come back and maybe take a little bit of that off, all I have to do is come back in with my little water bottle. I have a little mister and I can spray that area that I want to take it off and then I can rub it. And because it's a glaze and it's a water-based glaze and I have plenty of working time, you can see how I can pull all of that off. And I can go back over it. Options are endless. So you don't have to worry about being perfect because you can always take what you've done and pull it off. All right, so you remember in part one where I showed you guys how we made the texture medium come together and look like it was, uh, the wood was mitered. This is how we're going to really make that miter cut, that faux miter cut really show up. All right, so I'm just gonna extend my glaze because you can see where I've got my cut and it doesn't even matter if I go back over that, but I'm gonna come here. Now I'm not gonna do this whole side because I wanna show you guys one more way to do a glaze. I'm just gonna do a little bit so that you guys can see how that miter cut looks. So I'm gonna drag my glaze this way, just kinda where I overlapped it, okay? Now I'm gonna start pulling the glaze off on this side. Now here's where I wanna be really kinda of careful. And you could also wait. If you don't wanna do it while it's wet, you could let this side dry. Then you could pull the glaze off of this side. And that would be a lot easier. You wouldn't have to worry about um, messing up your, the direction of the way the, the uh, glaze is going. In fact, what I'm gonna do is kinda of just wipe it to pull some of that off, and then I'm just gonna go in that direction. This stuff is super forgiving. All right, now see how that glaze really goes into that miter line and makes it look like that wood is coming together. Looks really cool. All right, so I wanted, I'm gonna wipe this off just because I wanna show you guys another way or to how to use another pre-made glaze and how easy that is as well. See how easy that comes off, guys? So easy. I'm just gonna hit it with some water. 
come back in with a paper towel and I can clean that all up. And the only, like I said, the only reason I'm doing this is I want to show you guys a different glaze. All right, so the other glaze that I have is a glaze also by General Finishes. Like I said, I love General Finishes. And this is their pre-made glaze. Comes in all kind of colors. I just happen to have black. Now, Home Depot and uh, Lowe's, they also carry an antiquing glaze. And that's what you're going to be looking for is an antiquing glaze. And these are so, so easy. Everything's kind of already pre-mixed for you. Just use it straight out of the can. Okay, so with this glaze, you're gonna do the exact same way. I just happen to be using a foam brush. This is black. Now this is an actual black. I love black glazes. And I'm just gonna run that right up next to that line. I love the contrast of a white background with a black glaze, especially a general finishes glaze. And you just pull that off. General Finishes also has a Van Dyke Brown that is beautiful. We used it on a wood grain finish in one of our lives, if you guys saw that piece. So isn't that beautiful? Oh, I think that is so pretty. It just gives so much contrast. Love it. All right, so I'll finish out this piece in the black, and then you guys can see what it looks like on the gray. We'll let it dry, and then we'll come back, and who knows, we may put a little more finesse touch on it. All right, see you in just a minute. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do my edges. This is the rock edge, which I love doing more of this textured edge when I'm doing wood grain. You can make it look like a live edge slab. The more I pull off, the more of that white undertone and really creates a neat finish. Okay, so let's do the edge of the smoother side. Now you remember too, when I did this rock, this edge, I just used my fingers to kind of drag the Bondo. I didn't make it as textured as the, the what we call the rock edge. This, I just kind of slid my fingers in the Bondo just to create a little bit of that linear pattern, which is what I want. I don't want it to be really textured. So if you're doing this on, say, a laminate countertop, what you would do is you would take your grinder or a really heavy grit sandpaper, a real low grit sandpaper, and you would grind that edge really, really well, so that when you apply your Bondo to create the edge, that it would really have something to grab on. Now, if you'll see how this dripped over the side and dried, all I need to do is come back with some water. I can wipe that off, clean that up, and I can just go back over it again. See how that just comes off there? This is a super forgiving technique, guys. Come back over there. You can see my towel is getting pretty saturated, but that's all right. And just pull that off. If you want more, you can go over it again until you create the look that you're wanting. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry and I'll be right back. All right guys, so the glaze is just about dry and this could be a finish all on its own right here. We don't have to go any farther except to apply our epoxy, but because I know that you want me to go to the next step, I'm gonna do it for you. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna come in with another pre-made glaze and this is from Lowe's and it's uh, the Rust-Oleum uh, Decorative um, Antiquing Glaze, like I told you earlier, and this isn't a brown. I love the way browns and grays look together. It almost gives it a real weathered look. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back and I'm going to get a, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to play. Uh, I may create some planks. I don't know. Let's just see what happens. All right. So I'm going to kind of come in here first. I'm just going to kind of put a line here as if this were kind of a plank. Mm, 
Yeah, I think if I was gonna create actual planks, I would come in here with the black instead of the brown. That way I would have a little bit more contrast maybe where the, uh, the planks go together. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just go over the top of this ever so often with some brown. Now I'm just, I'm barely touching it, okay? So I'm not really forcing that glaze down all the way to the bottom like I did with the gray. I'm just, just kind of letting this brush kind of skim the top. Some places hit a little harder than others and that's okay, that's gonna be giving it the, the natural look. So I can still see a lot of that gray coming through. I really like that. I'm gonna pull it off now. Oh wow. Yeah, that looks cool. That really does give a rustic look, a very worn. Look at this right here, isn't that pretty? I like that a lot. Look at the contrast of just the gray and then with that brown on there. And, and just like before, if I wanted to pull some of this off, I could just wet my paper towel and pull off anywhere I didn't want it. So I like that a lot. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to do the whole thing like that. So this is more of a really weathered look. Now, if you'll see, I loaded my brush, but I'm just kind of coming down where it's just almost just the weight of the brush. See that? How it's just kind of dragging over. I'm not pushing that um, glaze down. Yeah, I like that a lot. Now, if you still wanted to kind of create that look of it to be planks, I could come in heavier and now this time I am kind of pushing it down into the wood see where my next plank would be probably about right here and then I'm going to actually put some at the end almost to give that illusion of there's kind of the end of the wood okay and I'm just going to blend it a little bit now you can see how it's a little darker on its edges and I'm gonna pull it off, still leaving quite a bit of that glaze where I want that. Okay, I like that. If you don't want it quite so stark, you just come back over the top. Wow, I like that a lot. All right, I'm gonna come back over. Now this time I'm just gonna barely touch again, barely touch my grain. You see how I'm creating kind of that 3D look? Now the higher your texture is, meaning when you go to sand your texture down after you've applied it and it's dried, the higher and more textured you leave your top, the more you're gonna have this effect of your glazes grabbing a hold of the highs and lows. If you sand it down quite a bit to where you can just barely feel the texture, which is fine, you're not gonna have this dramatic look when you apply your, gla your glazes. Now remember, if you do that, if you do leave it quite a bit higher, then you may have to put two coats of the epoxy so that you can make it super smooth, which I do anyway, because using this as a countertop, I wanna ensure that I have really good durability and I'm gonna put two coats of epoxy anyway. All right, I really like that. So by adding that brown, over the top of that gray, it just really gave a super cool weathered look. Love it. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to my front edge. Very cool. That looks so real, guys. Man, I love that. I love that. Now I can even, I know a lot of times if you if you build a top or you see a top made uh, with uh, pieces of board, each board itself is actually a different color. Um, so if you wanted to come in and may, maybe make this middle board a little darker so that you have a little more contrast, you could do that as well. Now it looks like there's just three totally different 
pieces of wood in there, types of wood. All right, now see, I could play with this thing all day because this is what I love to do. And just keep adding artful touches, or like I said, you could be very simple with this and you can do one coat of glaze and you're done. So this is where you can really let your art artistic ability kind of be creative and, and flow. All right, so I guess we're done. Should I do the black? Should I do the black with brown? Eh, why not? Let's do that really quick too. So I'm gonna come straight over the black now on this piece, I'm gonna come quite a bit darker because I've got the black, which is pretty dark. So I'm gonna come a little more aggressive with my brown over the top, still not pushing it down hard. I still don't wanna push it all the way down like I did my first layer of glaze. But look at that. That brown over that black is beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and run kind of over that mitered edge. So everything that I pulled off earlier where I wanted that white to show through, now that brown glaze is catching a hold of it. Oh, I think I, I, think I like this better than the gray, actually. I love that contrast. Now you notice I'm not being quite as careful as I was on the gray because I am trying to push it just a little farther down. Oh wow, that looks so pretty. You talk about a very rich, rich look. All right, let's do our rock edge. I'm just gonna kind of hit the highs. See how I'm kind of still letting that black show through. All right, love this, holy cow. All right guys, sorry, I couldn't take it. I had to come back and just keep playing with it. And I really like, I darkened up the uh, seams between the boards and I really kind of like this. So what I need you to do is tell me, do you like it with that darker seam down the middle where it uh, sort of separates the wood or do you like uh, without the dark? Let me know. But we're gonna go ahead and add that. I'm coming back actually this time with the black that I used on the other side to give it a more distinct line. And then we're just gonna come back with that and soften it out. And you can make it as, as distinct as you want. I'm gonna kind of dry my brush off a little bit and I'm gonna come back in and just kind of soften it out. So it almost looks like a shadow. So you guys let me know, do you like that? And I, I'm even gonna come over here and do this edge piece, kind of give it almost like a shadow. Now I barely have any of that glaze on this brush. It's just enough to kind of give it a shadow. Kind of hit the ends. All right. Again, guys, you don't have to do this. This is just me obsessing <laughs> and not knowing when to stop. All right, guys, now, I'm gonna let all this dry and I'll be back in a little bit and we'll put some epoxy on it. Okay, so I've mixed up the Stone Coat countertop epoxy. We're using um, the regular epoxy. And what I'm gonna do is, just because I can, you don't have to do this. You could just leave it the clear. But I'm gonna come in and add a tiny, bit of dark bronze mica powder. Now I'm only gonna add enough to give it a hint of a uh, sheen, a hint of a, of a tint, I guess you would call it. I definitely don't want it to be opaque. So I'm gonna just go a little bit at a time. Like I said, I just want to give it a hint. I've got 48 ounces of epoxy. We're, like I said, we're doing three ounces per square foot. So I'm just gonna put enough of that and I'm gonna mix it up with my paddle. Now you could see it's just giving a slight tint. It's not really changing the color. You see, I still have a little bit on my stick, but that's okay. All right, that's what I wanted. All right, so as I explained earlier, because this is texture, 
and I have quite a bit of texture, uh, highs and lows. Probably going to take two coats of the epoxy to get it to be uh, extremely smooth, which I do two coats anyway, so um, I have that extra durability when I'm doing a countertop. All right. Now you guys know I always use my hands. I like to be able to put that epoxy right where I need it. But if you don't want to use your hands, you can trial this, trowel this. I know y'all gonna get after me for saying that. Or you could use a foam roller, just about anything that you guys want to use. Like I said, I like using my hands and I can really push that product down into those textured grooves. Now you really can't tell that I put that mica powder unless the light hits it just right and it's gonna give just a little bit of a shimmer. You don't have to put that mica powder, but you know me, always wanna be a little extra. Now I'm not pushing it over the edges quite yet. I'll do that here in just a minute. Now, because this top is very textured, it's gonna grab on to this first coat of epoxy, and you're really not gonna see it move a whole lot as it tries to self-level. Now I'm gonna bring it over that edge, and as I do, I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna run it under that edge to help that epoxy flow under use my hands to get into all the highs and lows. Same thing on this. Oh wow, this is so pretty. I love how putting that epoxy over this glaze just absolutely makes it pop. Take my hand, by running it slightly skimming the top, I can tell where I have highs and lows, where I need more epoxy. Also by using my hand, I cut down on the amount of air bubbles, and I don't need to chop with the brush, which ensures that I will not get any of those paintbrush fibers in my finish. Okay, wow, this is absolutely gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna torch it lightly. So I wanna show you guys something. We talked about the fact that I'm using a textured medium and as I rolled it, I'm creating highs and lows. Now, as I, when I sanded this down, uh, I left some of those uh, areas a little higher than others. And in this case, you'll see right here, my epoxy is not quite covering all of this. It's just a couple of areas where it's a little higher. And that's no big deal because my second coat or my flood coat that I'm gonna come back and do in 24 hours is gonna absolutely cover this up and I'm gonna have a very, very smooth glass-like finish. So I'm not worried about any of that. Now, if you guys sand your surface a little smoother, then you're not gonna have those highs and lows. So the reason I like to have a little higher texture uh, a little more aggressive texture is because that way it really grabs onto my glazes. All right, so we'll let this sit for 24 hours and then we'll come back in with our flood coat, which I won't add any mica powders to that coat. It'll be just clear. Then we'll come back over and we will um, put the ultimate top coat in matte. So if you'd like to know how to do a flood coat and a UTC um, application. We'll link both of those videos in the description to this video. All right, guys, I think this turned out amazing. I absolutely love it. All right, so if I did a good job and if you like this type of application and these type of finishes, give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel because we are going to start doing more of these faux finishing along with our other uh, epoxy applications. So let us know what you want to see from us in the comments. All right, guys, check out all of our products that we have available on our website, rk3designs.com, and sign up for our email. If you do that, then you will be getting 
uh, exclusive promo codes to our classes and also for products that we sell on the website. The most important thing, guys, that you need to do though for me is not to be scared, to move forward and to continue being creative. Love you guys. See you next week.